What kind of gay porn sounds are those? Wow, that's that's how we start the news right there. <laughs> this is why we have chat included on our uh, in our in our news feed. Hey, we got a lot of stuff to talk about today. A lot. We have a ton of stuff to talk about today. Uh, it is. Uh, oh my God, I didn't even include in the list that Canada has legalized marijuana now. Holy crap. Okay, yeah, that was not that was on the list. But congratulations to Canada. Uh, for, uh, uh, for taking the, taking that huge step there and getting all of that money. Uh, the money, the money in this industry is insane. Uh, yeah, we're out. Don't come over. That's true. Yeah, there's no more. Apparently, like, every play is, like, sold out online before they even open up. Uh, so, yeah, it is, uh, it's, that's great. That's great. It's gonna be a ton of money coming into the, uh, uh, into Canada's, uh, economy and honestly i don't know enough about canada's economy to really tell you how that would actually influence anything uh or if you guys really ever see any of that money i have no idea but uh but still that's a pretty huge thing for uh for you know probably probably technically technically the largest by square footage <laughs> um, uh, country <clears throat> excuse me that uh that has legalized uh uh marijuana so there you go <clears throat> right i think so i mean technically right country yeah, I think so. Sure. <laughs> Is there even another country that has it completely? Like, just wholesale? Just, yeah, it's fucking... You can just do whatever you want. I have no I have no idea. I really have no idea. <clears throat> Our economy is great, but the extra green is nice. Yeah, you know, it's funny, but the best joke to come out of that was, uh, um, was, uh, oh, great, now Canadians are gonna be even nicer. <laughs> uh, oh, the Netherlands sort of weeks. Yeah, there you go. Okay, yeah, the Netherlands. There you go. I feel like you can do everything in the Le Netherlands. That's what I hear. It's just like there's certain parts of the EU where you could just kind of do whatever you want. And I was like, wow, I can name like one city where I, that can happen. Like you know, Pattaya in fucking Thailand. It's like, yeah, you could do that there too, but uh, it's not quite the same as, <laughs> as being in you know various parts of the EU. Uh, but yeah, so congratulations to Canada. That's awesome. That wasn't even where we were going to start today, though. Today, we have to start with, uh, we have to start at the beginning of the week, okay? So we'll start with, uh, October 14th, 2018, all right? Come with me on this trip back in time as we go all the way back to 2018. It's October the 14th, to be exact. I believe that makes it a Monday. JK, it's a Sunday. This article comes out from Vulture, and uh, in it they talk about you know just basically how to make how they're how they're working on uh, Red Dead Redemption. Like this is this is a big game. This is a big game, right? Uh, and so they talk a little bit about how they're uh, what they're doing here and there. You know uh, what's their um, uh, what's their like design philosophy and how how it relates to like previous GTA games and everything. Uh, and then at some point here, and I'm at the, because this is such a huge article, this is a really long interview, right? There it is. <laughs> As we search the fucking, the whole interview, uh, somewhere in here, uh, and this is just, this is just in context, okay? I'm gonna read this whole thing in context. Uh, I'll start up here. We always try, we always did try to dream big, says Edge, who directed the majority of those sessions beginning in 2003 at Rockstar's motion capture studio in Bethpage, New York. As a kid, he says he always wanted to direct a, a Western with Hitchcockian camera angles, shots from characters, from uh, characters' perspectives, and John Ford's strong sense of framing. But Red Dead Redemption 2 was much harder to direct than a movie, the, than when actors, when the actors were, are wearing skin tight, futuristic looking mocap suits. The polishing, rewrites, and re edits that uh, the Rockstar does are immense. We were working 100 hour weeks several times in 2018, Dan says. The finished game includes 300,000 animations, 500,000 lines of dialogue, and many more lines of code. Even for the Red Dead Redemption 2 uh, tra trailer and TV commercial, we probably made 70 versions, but the editors made several hundreds. Uh, Sam and I will probably both uh, make a lot, lots of suggestions, as will other members of the team, blah, 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 blah. So in context, this was not a big comment. This was not like the focal point. They didn't like deep dive into this and say, whoa, 100 hours, <sighs> right? What's going on there? It just, it was, it's just continues to just talk a little bit about just general stuff that you would read if you were really looking forward to this game, right? This is a lot of words. <laughs> 
and so, of course, of course, it blows up. Now, uh, at no point here am I saying that it is okay for a company to work its member, its its team for 100, 100 hours a week, right? Uh, I know I've done it before. <laughs> I know I've done it before. Not 100 hours. 100 hours is insane. Uh, I've put in probably 60 to 80 hours pretty commonly. It's probably at Zam, too. Uh, but anyways, yeah, so the, 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 it comes out and, um, they, they, they extract this line and it basically turns, this turns into the biggest development. All right. So this is Monday. This is the next morning. All right. This article comes out and it says Rockstar has been working 100 hour weeks on Red Dead Redemption 2. Studio co-founder Dan Hauser details the effort to put, put it into the upcoming Wild West epic. Um... To get one hour work days, you have to work roughly 17 hours for six days. Yeah, that's 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 pretty crazy. At the end of a, a, an eight hour day, quality of code may have already gotten god awful. Yeah, you're spending more time reviewing code uh, than you are than you are how long you should actually spend writing it. Uh, I have around 60 to 80 hour working six days a week, but doing that for over 10 years. Well, well, if you're used to that, then I guess tank infantry, then that's what you're used to. But it is obviously a big deal. Uh, it's a, it's a hot, it's a, it's definitely a hot button topic in the games industry right now because you know we're we're obviously well. well let's get there. Hold on. Well, so this happened, right? And then uh, let's see. Oh, that didn't belong there. Let me see. Then we have talks about unionizing uh, for video game developers to unionize. So that way they don't necessarily get fucked so often because that's been the hot topic, right? Is that, you know, the, the game developers are unfortunately working like during crunch time, working uh, mad, crazy hours. Uh, and so this article comes out uh, and basically just kind of follow. This is a media follow up to the initial rock stars working everybody 100 hours a week. Everybody online took it as everybody's working 100 hours a week. That's what it sounded like. The guys say, yeah, sometimes they work 100 hours a week. Uh, yeah, there's sometimes part will just forget it. He said that. So, But still, 100 hour weeks is... Uh, Quite a bit, even if it could have potentially been an off-the-cuff comment. Over here again, uh, Rockstar developers speak out about 100, uh, 100 hour weeks. This is a different follow-up now, all right? This is now the 18th, so we're now a few days ago, a few days later. Uh, if you guys can remember, that was yesterday, uh, and Rockstar developers speak out. So now we have a few developers that come out and say, well, no, hold on, my team, my team wasn't, uh, uh, <sighs> My oh, sorry, my team wasn't uh, wasn't doing that stuff, or my team was the only one, and I was isolated in the in the writing uh, group or whatever. And so essentially, like lots of discussion comes out, just talking about what the um, uh, what uh, who who's doing, it, who's not. Uh, another article: Rockstar employees speak out about uh, speak about working hours after a hundred hour week stir. So this is just like it's been a whole week. Like this has been a great week for for. Uh, for media, <laughs> it's like first you have you first you have the gaff you have the yeah that initial comment of like yeah man we work like hundred hours hundred hours a week sometimes it's crazy and then all of a sudden it's like whoa every single week they're working one hundred one hundred hours a week what the fuck? what then so then then it just blows up it's like well well hold on not everybody is and then all of a sudden these like PR yeah these PR prepped style thing it's all like here at Rockstar the environment or this the community the office environments and culture is is blah, 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 <laughs> and it's like, hmm, uh, do I think that they are working 100 hours a week every week? No. Do I think they, they that some people on that team have worked 100 hour weeks? Yeah, totally. There are folks that just end up working more than others because of what they, either they, they feel like they have to, uh, or they're told they have to, one of the two. Um, and so I'm sure at a company as big as, as Rockstar, uh, I don't know how many folks they have, but I'm guessing it's probably between 300 and 1,000. Um, well, probably more than that, actually. Uh, so I'd imagine in a group like that, in a company that big, you're going to have folks that are going to work insane hours, especially when you get close to crunch time to meet uh, to meet deadlines and all that stuff. Uh, obviously, there's an issue. About 400 people making uh, making Red Dead. There you go. Um, that's a fact, because Gunn said it. All right? All right? It's facts. Um, <laughs> I, tr I trust you, Guns. Uh, so yeah, it is, uh, it is likely that it has happened for sure. It is, it is good that we're kind of like shedding light on this because it sucks to have to, to have to work that many hours because, because it's not, remember all of this is born of just like shitty deadline making and shitty planning. So when they, when they say, they basically, they go to the investors and they say, Hey, you know, let's, uh, when are we going to release this game? And they say, 
Uh, and they basically try to like haggle to work out when they're gonna release the game. And it's like, well, we haven't even really like fucking started it yet. You already want a release date. Like we don't even really know the depth and the breadth of what we're gonna be putting inside of this title. And you already want a release date. And that's the thing. It's because they want to start planning everything now. So they plan their, you know, the 15 quarters ahead or whatever, just so they can have all that stuff on paper. Um, talking about Red Dead. Although this is a very similar conversation, isn't it? Uh, so yeah, <laughs> kind of like PFA. Uh, so yeah, it's like, and, and we, we see, we've seen games that have come out that have very clearly been rushed, uh, either, either because the company has run out of money, uh, or because they just basically mismanaged projects. Uh, we've seen tons, tons of, I mean, that's why every other studio like closed down because they can't manage your shit correctly. Um, and so, yeah, it's good that this happened. Even though, you know, it was obviously some a little bit taken out of context in terms of, like, the frequency of it. Some play sites are reporting that, you know, that that's what they do. <laughs> like, apparently that's just what they do there. Um, but, yeah, it's 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 good that uh, there are eyeballs on this stuff. Um, if it took them eight years to make, it, to, to make it, I'd say 2K said you could lose whatever. Rockstar is just shit at time management. Yeah, it's just time management. Scope, like, scope creep, all that good stuff. Hey, let's try this thing. Let's try this thing. Hey, let's add Battle Royale in there. We already have the assets. It should just be easy, right, guys? Just make a big map and throw a bunch of weapons all over the place. It's easy. This is... I understand this because I am that content guy that, that used to deal directly with developers. And I and I understood that the words I was saying was super shitty because I was like... And I, I try not to. I try to be... I try to understand, you know? I try to understand. It's like, hey, I know I know that... I know I'm trying to... I'm making this sound super easy because I'm a content guy. But can we do this? And how long would it take? Uh, so yeah, it's it's just mismanagement. That's all. With the see uh, solution. Oh, solution is era. Let's see what this is. Uh, we like to get this put it uh, put out around October next year. All right, sure, we'll put that out as rough release time. Let us know if we can move forward or back. Right, exactly. But see what but they they want to get it out in time for whatever you know Christmas or. Whatever deadline, you know, major uh, event, they want it to be a summer blockbuster, they want it to be a Christmas, you know, blockbuster, like, what do they want to do? When are they going to release it? Uh, for the record, one week has 168 total hours, so that is on average 14 hours and 16 minutes per day, uh, presuming a seven-day work week. Yeah, Jesus. <laughs> Man, I don't, I don't think, I mean, outside of the military, I can't tell you, I don't think I've ever worked more than, I don't think I've ever worked. No, in the military, yeah, outside of the military. In the military, I definitely have worked that long. 100 hour work week. It's totally uh, more than that. <laughs> but um, but outside of that, it's never it's never been that bad. It's never been that bad. In the military, it's 24 7. Well, I mean, it is and it isn't. You know, like it's 24 7. When you're deployed, though, it's pretty much, well, it's still like a job most days. When you're, when you're deployed, it's 24-7, and that's when you end up working like the crazy hours every week. Uh, it's because you're always available. You're, you're always there. Bailey, go do this. Bailey, go do that, right? It's, yeah, it's pretty much. Uh, average human needs around eight hours of sleep or more. That leaves 16 hours to be productive and be alive. You don't need eight hours of sleep. Don't no one fall for that stuff, Jagger. Come on. No one needs that much. I'm interested in seeing a team working 100-hour weeks on one project, then a 30-hour weeks on another, saying which one gives the better results. Nobody will ever fund that, but damn it, that would be awesome. Seriously, I mean the time taking longer to work on something really makes something really helps put the polish on stuff As somebody who makes music, I could tell you that you know It's like I've I revised and gone over and fine-tuned tracks for my next album that is that's not doesn't have a release date Huh? Huh? Is that crazy? Because I'm working at a good pace to, to create a, uh, a fantastic product uh, That you guys will cherish for years to come uh, and that takes time all right, so next story. Speaking of, next story. This is one that you guys probably all heard. Now, before you say anything, before you say anything, just listen. For those for those who aren't in, for those who aren't in, they're not, they're not in the know, okay? Fallout 76 Platinum Edition costs $115 and doesn't include Fallout 76. Oh, 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 oh my God. It contains everything you could ever want, except, like, the game. Now, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. We're getting there. So it says, as the Fallout 76 beta approaches, blah da 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 doesn't include the game itself. Right? So this was a this was everywhere. It even says, this, I bring this up mainly because while on Bethesda's site, it's pretty clear and careful to the readers uh, that the Platinum Edition doesn't include the actual Fallout 76 game. It even says it twice. And uh, then it says this Amazon listing where it's just kind of a few bucks doesn't make it so clear. Uh, so 
he's 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 obviously citing that it doesn't come with it. Blah blah blah. Now nobody has said the actual catch. There's a catch here. There's a catch here. All right. But first, I got to show you everything else. <laughs> there are a lot of articles. There are a lot of articles that have started circulating after this was put out. Uh, this one, Fallout 76 Platinum Edition, doesn't feature the actual game. It says, I'm not entirely sure which marketing deity was in Bethesda's ear when they finalized Fallout 76 Platinum Edition package without the actual game inside, especially considering the hefty $115 price tag that the company decided on. Right, and it goes on and on and on, and even down here it says again. It says uh, uh, it says you can find Bethesda's breakdown of Fallout 76 Platinum Edition here, and then it says, "Oh, and nice catch, PC gamer." And so, you go here, and this is Bethesda's site. Fallout 76 Platinum Edition, Plat Platinum Edition, Prima Guide. Do you guys notice anything? This, does anything here stand out to you as maybe perhaps the reason why this does not include the game? Yes. It's Omnia. First one in. Right back. Right up there behind him. It's because it is a Platinum Edition Prima guide. It is not the Platinum Edition of Fallout 76. You would think that people would catch this. But they don't. Let's see. Games Radar. Fallout 76 Platinum Edition has everything except Fallout 76. Uh, let's see. Uh, we just did all chair to see. Uh, what else can I find? <laughs> oh god, hold on. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, Windows 10 to see. Uh, Eurogamer. Uh, VGR.com Doesn't actually include, wait, f wait for it, wait, hold on guys, wait, hold up. Doesn't include Fallout 76. The, the guide, it's a guide, it's a guide, guys. So many places picked up this article, picked this up and basically ran with it and said, so now there's, there's probably an army of folks that are just like, who read that headline and who are like, whoa, well, I'm not gonna buy that, I guess. Maybe? Wow, what a bunch of jerks. Why would they do this? It's just the Prima Guide. Um, and for some reason, people don't see those words. What is it? Doesn't look like anything to me. <laughs> so there, there's your, there's your, there's your uh, weekly dose of, uh, of ethics and video game journalism. <laughs> alright, alright, next. We got more, we got more, we got more. Fallout 76 Prima Guide is available right now for $115 if you want, if you want. There you go. There you go. It's there for the for you guys who want to pick that up. Alright? You guys really like those guides. Uh, see, the next thing that came up, that was pretty interesting. I think pretty interesting to a lot of you guys. Uh, it's a game to a guy that's not out yet. Well, it's a pre-order. You, you pre-order it, yeah. Uh, and sometimes you get it beforehand, too. It actually kind of acts like a preview to the game. Uh, so it's not, that's not too unusual. Does the Prima Guide come with Fallout 76? Oh. <laughs> All right, next, 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 next. Diablo fans, check it out. So listen, let's talk about Diablo at uh, at BlizzCon 2018. BlizzCon 2018 is almost here, and we've seen a lot of rumors flying around about our plans for Diablo at the show. These are very exciting times. We currently have multiple teams working on different Diablo projects, and we can't wait to tell you about them when the time is right. We know many of you are hoping for, and we can only say that good things come to those who wait, but evil things often take longer. We appreciate your patience as our team works tirelessly to create nightmarish experiences worthy of the Lord of Terror. Uh, this was, this was probably the biggest hype train derailing uh, of this quarter. <laughs> like, really, people were really, Really getting pumped. I, I talked about it, what, last week, I think, right? Uh, yeah, it doesn't say anyway. Yeah, it does, you're right. It does not say that they are not going to make a Diablo 4 announcement. And which, which, oh my god. Which would just make this whole thing so much better. Because, because, r slash Diablo just has been just a fucking mess. Like, 
R slash Diablo needs the biggest hug right now and just kind of like, okay, that's enough. Calm down. Everything's going to be fine because <laughs> we all worked ourselves up into a Diablo 4 release announcement. Oh man, we might get it. We might get it. We might get it, right? Some people went farther. Oh, we should want this. We should want this. Hey, let's do some like, let's gather some suggestions. Let's figure out, you know, maybe we can help the devs out. Tell them what we want. What did we not like about Diablo 3? What do we like about it? Blah, 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 blah. Right? They pick it up and they say, so we're working on a lot of things. We'll tell you what they are when they, um, when we get through it, right? Suddenly, whoa, the whole thing flipped. Let's go ahead and get this over here. We're just going to flip right through the, uh, this is their actual subreddit. Uh, and I'm not trying to pick on r slash Diablo at all because every subreddit's like this. Uh, especially a fan game, right? A fan, a fan subreddit uh, of a certain game or whatever. Uh, and one of the comment, one of the, one of the ones, uh, the titles is actually probably most hilarious. I'm 34 years old. I thought I was, I thought I was an adult until I heard the hype train. This hype train got derailed and it just like, it's just, it, it's just like, man, like, oh, I really like, I thought I was an adult until this hype. I, I get that. I get that. But man, it's just, so it's a big, it's a bit, let me start by saying this. I'm more sad than angry, right? It's just all, all of the, all the different stages of just like, of just coming to terms with your addiction and just, just, oh man, ah, oh, recognize that there's a problem. <laughs> uh, anger, uh, uh, you know, uh, pleading. It's just like every step is here, man. And now, and now it's funny because here's the way it usually works. Usually it's like hype, hype, hype. Oh my God, what the hell happened to our hype? This is what, no, fuck this company. My hype, my hype, my hype, right? And then it turns into, I'm I'm now, I'm now never gonna buy this game again. I'm never gonna do it. I'm never gonna support this title. And then it turns into, I'm getting tired of seeing all this. I'm not gonna support this title post. Can we get back to the way it was before with all this stuff? Like, it just becomes a cycle. It's a, the stages of grief, thank you. The stage, of, it just becomes a cycle. And Reddit does it every time. Like every, every again, every like major, game or like fan whatever subreddit goes through the same thing whenever they don't get what they want it's it's hype for the thing mad they're not getting the thing and then uh i'm tired of seeing all these people that are mad they're not getting the thing you should just like what you have and then it just goes on from there it's just like a waveform it's fucking great um so yeah, and then this comes out, it says Activision Blizzard stock drops 8.29% after the no Diablo 4 announcement. It says potentially misleading. We'll talk about that in a second too. Uh, so yeah, there's basically just a lot of, um, a lot of very upset people because they're not going to get Diablo 4 uh, or they think we don't actually know. We don't actually know. We don't know. It's It could still happen. I actually wonder, I wonder if r slash Diablo will swing back in that direction. If they'll like... You know, hype for the announcement. Oh, I'm not getting announcement. Oh, I'm tired about people. I'm tired of people who don't, who are mad that they're not getting the announcement. But they didn't say we're not gonna get the announcement. Hype for the announcement. <laughs> it's just, just I'm telling you, it's fucking wait for him. Um, you are one of those people in that Reddit. I I am. Oh wait, I wait. Which one? Which one am I? I I mean, I do. I read it, and I was I I talked about this last week on this show. Uh, we talked a little bit about uh, about Diablo 4 and, and, and the hype for it and everything. Um, but you don't see me going through the different stages of grief. It's just funny. It's just, it's funny. I mean, am I disappointed when I could get anything with Diablo 4? Yeah, but at the same time, I believe last week uh, uh, that we, we, I also mentioned that it seems odd that they would make a Diablo 4 announcement when they just release a switch version of the game a port of the game so that's why it's like it's like yeah it's, it seems it seems like it was probably too good to be true uh, a lot of people are still holding out for a diablo 2 classic or diablo classic um uh announcement but i guess i guess we'll just wait and see we only have two weeks right yeah like two weeks you are straight denial right now oh i am God, I feel like I was just being observer on this stuff, but I guess I guess I'm I guess I'm in denial. Um, yeah, so Diablo, I mean Diablo Four. Diablo Four is in two weeks. Uh, no, no. Uh, so BlizzCon is in two weeks, and um, and I guess uh, I guess we have no idea what it is that we're going to get there. Uh, a lot of folks are are upset. They say that uh, uh, they. Um, 
Yo, wait, wait. You know what went wrong? People got their hopes up and everyone knows don't get your hopes up. Yes, that's right. That's right. Don't get your hopes up, right? Uh, people are upset because they feel like they were duped into buying um, uh, buying uh, tickets to, to BlizzCon or virtual ticket passes to BlizzCon. Uh, people think they were duped on that. So that's 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 one of the major reasons I've, I've seen that people are upset uh, about this is because they feel like they feel like they were misled. Uh, I don't know where where you could really constitute like a very mis a misleading statement from them when they have not made any misleading statements. Everything was just pulled out of uh, speculation based off of floor plans and schedules and all that. Uh, and icons, the, oh, hey, it's not, instead of three lines, it's got four sides. I, I was right there, too. I was like, hey, it does. Gonna get the tinfoil hat out, right? It was like, eh, maybe it is, you know? Um, <clears throat> so, so yeah, like, the, the, people are looking for ways to go and do returns and everything right now, which is like, I mean, that, that's, that's what, it, that, that's what you gotta do, and that's what you gotta do if you feel like you need to make a, uh, uh, a statement. But even in here, you know, folks are saying, I hope that, uh, the crowd... Yeah, if the BlizzCon reveal is as lame as we're expecting, I hope the crowd at the main stage has the guts to let Blizzard know how we feel about it. Uh, <clears throat> I feel like... I feel like crowds are pretty good at, um... At, at the gaming conventions, at letting people know what they think. In, in, in gaming-specific conventions. Um... It's tough, it's, yeah, it's tough, it's, it's, it is, it is a Blizzard crowd, right? Uh, but if they were to, if I feel like if they came out and said and had some, if they, okay, for example, if they came out and said Diablo Diablo three is coming to to Android and iOS, there's no way you can tell me that on the main stage that they made that announcement that people wouldn't be like boo because you know they would. That would definitely happen, or they would laugh. Or they would laugh. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, but yeah, we'll have to, uh, <clears throat> I guess, just wait two weeks. Just see what happens. Um, I'm sure we'll probably speculate a little more. Oh, man, we're not going to have the show next week because of TwitchCon, are we? Damn. Um, damn. I'll have to work that out somehow. I don't know how we're going to do that. That sucks. I missed my first episode, maybe two, because of BlizzCon. I got to figure something out with that. Maybe, I, may, maybe, maybe you know what I should do? Maybe I should see if I could get Josh on this show. I feel like he'd be a good fit. I feel like Josh Allen would be a really good fit for this show. Seems like we have personalities that might uh, mesh pretty well. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Uh, if it was, if it isn't Diablo Four, what is the big announcement this year? Uh, it, it isn't a WoW X pack. So yeah, that was actually was funny. It was my other notes was what are they gonna announce? Yeah. Uh, Overwatch has got a new hero. It's funny. I, I feel like what you're what you're copying here is actually exactly what I read uh, somewhere else, and it's true. It's like there's there's really not a whole lot of stuff left except what Goblin says potentially a new IP. Um, so Warcraft Three Classic, yeah, sure, sure. I mean, I would like a Warcraft Two Classic, but Warcraft One Classic, but that's fine. Um, but yeah, it's 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 possible we could get a new IP. Uh, which I feel like would be pretty crazy because I just don't, I don't, I, I don't know. I just feel like they went so many years until they, they got Overwatch and Overwatch was what? That was what? Four years ago? Is it four years ago? They made the announcement. I feel like it's so soon. Don't they have to wait, you know, 20 years between announcements from new IPs? Like, isn't that what they're supposed to do? I don't know. Um, there's no room in the new schedule unless half of it is lying to us for a new IP. Yeah, well, there's that too. Yeah, so... Uh, I, I, I'm uh, I'm curious to see what they're going to say. StarCraft 3 is a possibility, but honestly, I don't think it's going to happen. Again, like StarCraft 2 came out so, so, so long after StarCraft 1, and StarCraft 2 Esports is... Uh, and I mean, StarCraft Esports, one Esports is still a thing. Okay, so it's like, it's, that's fucking huge. Uh, I think if Blizz pulled a lame duck at the what's next for Diablo, it would go over really bad. <clears throat> Probably. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're all going to be watching, I'm sure, right? They already said StarCraft is a dead game. Well, they didn't sp explicitly say that, but I don't know. I have no idea. New IP, spinoff game has to be coming soon. A spinoff game. That's what I'll believe. I, I will totally believe that an Overwatch character spin-off game could happen. Definitely. 
just like an entire separate adventure or something kind of just basically probably tracer yeah totally totally uh just giving us like a backstory on those characters and how they you know kind of progress overwatch ghosts oh man yes see Ooh. Ooh, oh man. Oh, that's a rough one, ghosts. Oh, that's pretty funny. Yeah, so there you go. Single player Overwatch campaign game. That's that's what people will say. Um But yeah, though they do. They have they have there's already so many games surrounding other like Overwatch is uh the only like like single IP that they own they have that that doesn't have any like satellite titles, you know? Like with uh, StarCraft 2, there's expansions in the StarCraft 1 uh, and there's ghosts. Uh, there's uh, um, and then with uh, with World of Warcraft, I mean, I have to fucking start there, right? Like there's fucking infinite number of things for that. Uh, Diablo also like tons of stuff for Diablo. I just feel like Overwatch right now is just Overwatch. And that gives them they've now developed Overwatch into this like mass that now has enough enough actual pull to to generate a few satellite titles surrounding the uh surrounding it so um so yeah i am <laughs> it's all these fucking battle royale talks you guys are hilarious yeah it's starcraft battle royale i mean if it works for uh for uh, um oh man i'm drawing a blank now uh uh battle rights then uh why not why wouldn't it work for everything else <laughs> blizzard zombie survival they bring jazz and then bring back something like Ghost for StarCraft. I, I I think people would like to see that. That might get a, that might get a good like. Oh my god! Finally, yay! That'll get that. You know. Poe has a battle royale. Yeah, there you go. See, see, it didn't work for battle right. Aw, I I I uh, I was excited for it, but I couldn't even get the I couldn't even get the energy up to like go and like play it. I was just like, oh man, do I really want to get in there and play that? I really like it, but I actually like watching it more than I like playing it. But <sighs> now. The comment that says Activision Blizzard stock drops 8.29% after the no Diablo 4 announcement is technically true. It did drop after the announcement about there not being uh, about the not being potentially potentially uh, we sorry uh, uh, Blizzard's announcement that kind of alluded to there not being the Diablo announcement that I specifically wanted to hear about at BlizzCon cause this kind of reaction uh no no you see you think i'm in denial i i, I feel like i'm backing everything up sa i'm saying here with like actual things here i think you're being you're being weird guns because look activision blizzard slumps as call of duty sales disappoint call of duty B black ops 4 blackouts colon Colon, colon, not doing, uh, not performing as well as, uh, as Activision had thought that I uh, thought it would. Regardless of the fact that we play it more than any other Call of Duty game that's ever been released. <laughs> I mean, that's an exaggeration, but please bear with me for a moment. Uh, regardless of that does not mean that, um, it was, uh, that it's catching on with, Every, with with all the rest of the uh, uh, demographic. So, I mean, it's also reported it is another article, same thing. Uh, it just basically breaks down and says that the stock market had a tough session on Thursday. Um, and it points out that Activision's blockbuster release isn't enough. Shares of Activ Activision Blizzard lowered by 8% despite what for uh, uh, just by any other company would have been uh, seen as a highly successful game release. So, it's like, I mean, like, right back, you're right, Blackout sold 500 million in the first week. Like, how is that not good? Apparently, it wasn't good enough. That's the, that's the thing. It's like, the expectations are so high that even though it sold so incredibly well, it's just not what they projected it to be. And that, that means that it's not doing well enough. Uh, it doesn't, it doesn't bode well for the future of Activision Blizzard or the IP. And that is why the stock dipped 8%. Maybe not exclusively because it's been a rough and weird week for a couple weeks for stocks. But that is what sites are attributing the drop uh, uh, to. Uh, we've had uh, we've had nothing saying that we are, are not getting Blizzard from Diablo. Just anti hype triangle. Oh, I know, I know. We just talked about Hulk Hogwai. I think you just tuned in. Um, the main competitor is free. What'd you expect? 
Uh, and so that's another discussion that's happening is basically people are saying, well, what if, and this is more like, I think just people that I follow on Twitter that is like, what if we like split this off and made this part, the BR part, Blackout, uh, free to play? I think that'd be great. Honestly, I think that'd be great. Um, but uh, but yeah, you see, the, the drop was on the 17th, 18th, Blops was released uh, 12th, Diablo announced it was two days later. Yeah, I know, I know. I, you know but you it takes time to calculate like how well your, your, uh, your game's doing within the first week of sales, though. Um, Call of Duty fanboy stock market analysis. <laughs> what? Uh, you see, they'll, they'll never do what? Um, Square Enix Tomb Raider feeling. Dude, like that was that's another good example. Like Tomb Raider, the first Tomb Raider sold like two point something million or something like that within the like, within the first period that they really looked at it, right? Um, oh, split off, yeah, Blackout. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, and Squeenix was like, you know what? That's not that's not enough. That's not very good. And it's like, well, hold on a second. Like, I mean, like two two something million. That's a significant amount. But I guess if it doesn't meet the expectations of the investors, then that's what. And that's how you dictate how your stock goes. So, um, <clears throat> 2.3 million like the first year. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, so yeah, just looking, talking about, about Blackout being free to play as a separate unit. This is like wild fucking, like, this is totally not going to happen. Like, that's just been discussion that people have said, uh, have been talking about, you know, whether or not uh, they feel like it's a good idea. Um, I think it'd be cool because it's more people get in, plus it just give me a bunch of free shit, I guess, and then I already own the rest of the game, so eventually I go check out, like, zombies or whatever else. I keep free, I have to reminding myself, I, I keep having to remind myself that there is more to the game than just, uh, just that, but whatever. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's, uh, that's just, that's just, it is what it is. It's, 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 this, the stock dropping, again, uh, and, you know, I'm not a stock market analyst, but when the article says it dropped because of this and it's a stock market site <laughs> or the sites that are reporting are people that do this shit for a living, then you know what? Maybe that does make a little bit more sense. Um, but it's OK. It's OK. It's OK because uh, because they they got back up battle for Azeroth. You could come back for a limited time. You are one of Azeroth's chosen. Don't worry, Blops. You're failing sales at five hundred million dollars. Oh God, don't worry. We'll we'll go ahead and uh, <laughs> we'll we'll go ahead and just kind of like bring some more folks and bring some more uh, um, monthly active users in uh, by uh, you know offering a free three day trial. Let's see, does it say here? Because I was logged in when I saw this. Uh, I wonder if it's different now. Yeah, here it is. So it's a three-day trial phase. Uh, I think it says here at the top here too. Let's see, three, uh, three day. I <laughs> know it just says it twice. It's like this small print. Redeem your gift in the app. Click the gift icon to claim to begin your three-day expansion trial. Three days. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a bad girlfriend. It's like, come on, let's just let's just go out on just just this is what just let's just go out and see a movie and just talk. Let's just go out and talk. It's just like, oh man. <sighs> Uh, I made a figure of the place. Oh, I'll have to, uh, uh, well, what is it? Hold on. Is it, is it something I can use in the news here? What do you got? Oh, geez. Oh, God. Why not? It's, it's in line with everything we're talking about right now. Blizzard fans hoping for a Diablo announcement at BlizzCon. But you cannot kill hope. Blizzard. Can't I? <laughs> yes. Yes, there. Uh, so, the, um... I got this actually because as it turns out, I don't own the expansion. I forgot that I never purchased the damn expansion. Um, and so I got this was actually uh, I got this link from my email uh, trying to get me back for three days. Three days doesn't seem like a whole lot of time. And actually, like three, the three day point feels like I mean, it's like, well, I guess a weekend, right? Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then that's it. It's all you get to, to do. I feel like you really need. I feel like you would need at least seven to seven to fourteen days to really know if you're gonna like an expansion. But I have a feeling that um, that's a that's a little bit uh, uh, too long before you realize that you, you're limited on on what kind of things you can do, or or basically when the yeah when the when the bad parts start to kind of rear their ugly heads. Um, there is actually a write up on uh, uh, because every Blizzard subreddit has to have their moments uh and uh the most recent one i saw on r slash wow was that they're they're upset at blizzard for shattering the illusion 
Now, this is not verbatim, but it's pretty close. Like something along those lines where they they didn't mind that they are on. You don't mind that you're on a treadmill. It's just that the treadmill has to be pretty well disguised so you don't feel like you're on it. You don't mind that you're doing the same shit over and over again. Just disguise it a little bit. And so that's what people are saying is like they're saying that uh, in this thread um, that they um, they feel like Blizzard has been uh, handling uh, shrouding that yeah you know, that uh, and hide masking the grind with a um, uh, you know and and thus basically exposing the uh, the grind itself and and making it very apparent. So it's a um, so this went out uh, for everybody that wants to go and try it for three days. Uh, I don't like how I used to feel like I was conquering the world, but now the world just keeps up with me. Uh, wow, it's been on tremble for ages, and it's been a pretty piss poor job hiding it, in my opinion. Well, I mean, some people, some people see it differently. I guess you know, with the with the with the uh, uh, the advent of like these different features uh, from like the uh, the garrisons to uh, um, uh, artifacts. Uh, uh, artifacts the, the special missions and all that i'm cracking my knuckles i do this i'm sorry <laughs> uh basically when they when they introduce these like grind worthy things um they try to mask it as best they can and you know sometimes it's just like they i guess apparently they don't do i, I can't tell you because i've not played bfa so i don't know what from personal experience what the experience is like there uh but uh but it seems like everybody doesn't like it including here in chat actually a lot of you guys were saying that uh, bfa is bad I don't know if you're echoing sentiments from other folks or if it's just kind of your own personal experience. Um, they started pulling the curtain back and the treble after mop. I feel that they screwed up by not having something like the Suramar quest series that fed us something each week to help us uh, with the grindy feel. That's true. I remember the Suramar stuff. Yeah. I mean, that was like what that was Legion. No, uh, was it Legion? Was it Legion? I can't remember. No. I, I, I forgot. It was Legion, right? Okay. Uh, God, I need mean, to get all the damn expansions are just like, <laughs> just like blend for me now. Uh, as someone who's still playing BFA, I'm still enjoying it. It isn't perfect, but it's not nearly as terrible as most people are saying. There you go. <laughs> who in chat would not like BFA? Uh, especially guys, gated dungeon content. Miss was awful, and that's where you quit. Uh, BFA, as far as, uh, as far as it looks, is good, but the quest and mechanics are very grindy. And, uh, and there you go. There's that. Wow. That's, uh, we're just gonna go and get rid of that. Boop. There we go. Weird. <laughs> <laughs> Looks whatever that I don't know what that is. it was like a fish or something. What the hell? It's weird. Did it show up over here? I don't even know. Crazy. Um, it looked like a fish. It was like a fish diving into the water or something. Nah. It was a shrimp. Okay, that's even weirder. The fucking spam is getting weird. The hell? It was a bunny. Even weirder. Even stranger. What the hell? Just weird. Like I'm gonna spam this guy with uh, with this goldfish. ASCII. Whoa, shit. Got him. <laughs> it looked like, oh, look like a penis to you. Oh, shit. I'm usually pretty good at recognizing those. All right, there's more. There's more. There's more. So this actually happened this morning. This morning this happened. Uh, I don't know if this, uh, you guys may have not have heard of this. I uh, heard this story, but uh, it's pretty fucking funny. And also, like, disappointing. <laughs> so... Uh, Optic India disqualified after Forsaken found cheating. Forsaken, I know just coming off of, uh, speaking of Forsaken, uh, 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 damn, I should have pre that. Uh, Forsaken, yes, the Forsaken have been cheating. <laughs> uh, so for those of you guys who follow CSGO events, there was a land that happened in, uh, it was the Extremes Land 2018 Asia Finals. And it was determined that the player, uh, Nikhil Forsaken Kumovat, was using cheating software at a LAN. He was cheating at a LAN. And this was like, it may not have been the biggest tournament that you guys have ever seen. Uh, but <laughs> it was still big enough that when you look at the footage, which we have right here, uh, like, here he is. This is after he's been busted and the, uh, uh, the refs and everybody are trying to like look at his computer and he's like, he's doing that shit you do when like your girlfriend comes in and you're looking at something you're totally not supposed to. And you like super quick, like, like, like alt tab, alt tab, alt tab for just, you know, like close the window. Right. Like that's pretty much what he's doing here. It's pretty fucking hilarious. Uh, so he's just like, he's a reaching over and they're like, no, 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 look, look, it, it just, it's just like, look, he's holding his hands back. 
actually holding his arms back. <laughs> like, and look at look at this dude. Can I, wait, can I get a close up of that? Can you see this guy's face? Look at this guy. <laughs> oh, like he he knows he knows he doesn't know. Technically, he doesn't know. They they all they all came back and said they don't know. Uh, they they didn't know. So if you guys want to see what actually uh, uh spurred this, actually I got the clip here. This is also courtesy of Slasher. Actually, Slasher. Uh, I, I did a really good job of actually just, I, I don't follow him for t too many things, but, uh, um, he did happen to grab all of the, uh, uh, all the clips and keep it on a nice, nice, neat order for us to watch. Uh, the quality is shit. The quality is shit. But this is the point where, um, you basically, when you see him shooting at somebody in a wall or, uh, which I think is at the, at the end here. Uh, sorry again for the quality. Quality super bad. Um, but essentially he's using a, like, toggleable, um, yeah, and like the last clip there. He's using like a toggleable, <laughs> that's a tough word to say, uh, 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 aimbot that will allow him to, whenever he's near, he basically like toggles about holding a key or something, and it will then turn on the effect. So that way you, you get near the player and then you, and then it will lock on, and then you let go and it'll release it. Uh, the problem is that sometimes, and here's another clip, this one is from 2017, uh, and this one, you can actually very, this is, this one you can very clearly see, uh, when he does it. <clears throat> so you watch right here, this guy over here in this corner, you can see a super slow-mo here, uh, comes around and then just starts shooting at <laughs> Oh, man. So, it's just, it, there's no, there's no, look at, look at, just, oh, I'm just gonna snap right to that and just, oh, busted, ah. Oh. So... He got busted for um for cheating. That's when they came over and they looked at his computer and they're just like, oh, and they had to hold his arms back. Don't touch your machine. So that was enough. That was sufficient evidence. They went ahead and banned him uh, and also disqualified their team. So he is no longer able to uh, 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 able to uh, um, compete. As far as we know, he's actually since deleted his Twitter. Uh, he was forsaken CS and it does not exist anymore. So he's deleted his Twitter. And I think he's just going to go ahead and just probably disappear from the esports world probably forever. Um, I thought this was interesting because it's it, it made me think like, wow, man, like we're oh, yeah, optic dropped them. I, I guess I forgot that part. Yeah, optic dropped them as well. So he's no longer an optic and basically he's done. Um, but I, I'll just think like, wow, like we're we're finally like big enough that we have like people getting caught cheating at events. Like, ooh, how exciting is that? You know, like we're we're actually big enough now where, you know, People are going to be like, it's it's kind of like if you watch baseball, you see this a lot. They'll put a material that they'll hide like somewhere, like it'll be like under their hat or something or or they'll hide it somewhere uh, and they'll use it to kind of change the grip and feel of the ball or add something to the ball to kind of make it make it not necessarily grip the bat as, as well, you know, stuff like that. Uh, and so that's happened a number of times in uh, that's just uh, MLB. I, I don't even know. Uh, corking bats. I, I mean, just lube on the ball. I mean, yeah. I mean, in every sport. I mean, like the Deflate Gate. Oh my God. Yeah. Everybody knows about Deflate Gate. Uh, when uh, um, what was that? who was that? I don't even remember the fucking uh, because I don't watch a lot of football, so I apologize. But I knew it's funny. I remember Deflate Gate because I watched that fucking game, the Super Bowl game, and they were saying that the football, uh, the American football, uh, um, um, was Tom Brady. Thank you. They were saying Tom Brady. Uh, purposefully allowed uh, semi-deflated balls to be used with uh, uh, during the Super Bowl, and that's what granted them the win. And so, I mean, I assume that everybody knew about Deflate Gate because I don't watch a lot of football and I knew about it, but that's fine. That's fine. Uh, still, though, yes, deflated balls, that was a huge deal. So, yeah, we have our own. Like, we, we now have our own uh, fantastic uh, uh, cheating uh, legacy starting up right now. Not into sports ball. I mean, I do watch some sports. I do. Uh, I like watching, um, uh, occasionally I'll watch basketball. Uh, basketball is just like, I, I like watching basketball for like the individuals. Like you watch, I don't necessarily watch for the teams. I watch to, I watch to see like, you know, like the individuals play, um, uh, like LeBron James, like, uh, obviously like, um, I mean, like, even back in the day, I used to watch a little bit of basketball just to watch, like, Jordan play or somebody. 
uh, J.R. Ryder. I was a fan of J.R. Ryder, just specifically him, because he used to play for UNLV, and I, he was really good in UNLV, and it didn't do as well in uh, in, in uh, NBA. But, uh, but yeah, like, I don't watch a lot. I don't watch a lot. I watch baseball, and that's kind of it. And it's because my wife's a big baseball fan, and so it's like, yeah, you know. Um, he said, nah, fuck LeBron. <laughs> you can't deny them. The man's got skill. Come on. Come on. Uh... Still, football is still what you folks call soccer to me. I know, I know. I try, I try to preface it with American football because I know people will say that, but apparently I forget sometimes. Sorry. Um, LeBron isn't nothing. There we go. That's a nice thing to say. LeBron isn't nothing. There you go. Yeah, that's it. Give the man the respect he deserves. <laughs> uh, but fuck the Lakers. I haven't watched the Lakers play yet. Uh, now, but man, after, after the last, after the last game, the last, uh, um, uh, championships, I watched that, uh, oh man, you just knew that he was done. You just knew that LeBron was never coming back. Like, dude, just like had the most amazing numbers you've ever seen in any basketball game in the history of the game. And like, and it still wasn't enough. <laughs> like you talk about carrying. Oh man. I'm actually curious how, uh, how that, how the, the team's going to do this year without LeBron actually. Uh, it might be the first time I actually pay attention to a team. <laughs> to see how badly they do. Uh, I don't watch Josh Allen play football. No, I don't. I don't. Uh, I'm a Miami fan, so I'm real grateful to... There you go. LeBron is better than you at basketball, but that's saying a lot because I can outrun someone in a wheelchair when going... <laughs> you can't. You can or can't. There's a big distinction there. You can. You can. It's good. I could too. Uh... <laughs> uh, so... We have a couple more pieces. Actually, while we're done with the big news, we're, uh, the the big uh, uh, the big headline news. This one actually just came out today, though. Speaking of esports, uh, speaking of esports, uh, here we go. Total Biscuit to be inducted into the esports Hall of Fame at ESL One Hamburg 2018 as the first non-player, <clears throat> and I think that's awesome. Um, I know I, I'm sure that some folks here are probably indifferent on Total Biscuit and fucking whatever. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, that's awesome. I think that's awesome. Uh, I think especially with how, like how he's been, how he's been treated after his death. It's like, yeah, dude, he totally fucking deserves it. Like clearly, I mean, it's been, I, I don't, it's been how long now, uh, since he passed. I don't even know how long he's, but, but still like there's still articles coming out that like they try to basically use his name for like, for, uh, uh fuck, it's just ridiculous. But anyways, yeah, he did do a lot, uh, a lot for gaming. Uh, is that for like six months? Yeah, it's like six months, right? Crazy. Just fucking crazy. <clears throat> so anyways, yeah, uh, a true gaming legend will be inducted into the Esports Hall of Fame presented by uh, PaySafe card during ESL 1 Hamburg 2018 at the end of October. John Peter Toll Biscuit Bane. Uh, from forming the WoW Radio uh, to to numerous YouTube shows and podcasts, Toll Biscuit has been widely respected for his vast influences across the gaming community and prominence also shaped the esports scenes around him. Yeah, so, uh, so yeah, it's, uh, that's a cool thing. That's a really cool thing. I mean, like, I didn't even know we really had this that we could offer because we do it and it's the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame does it. You know, it's just like, oh yeah, we'll grant, you, people get into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and it's a huge deal. And it's like, I didn't even fucking know that we had, uh, an esports, uh, uh, uh hall, hall of Fame, but, uh, apparently we do. So yeah, I'll definitely say that he deserves to be there. Uh, unpopular opinion. Uh oh, uh, I know he did a lot of things, but it, this just feels like he's getting it because he died. Don't get me wrong. I, I feel I believe he does deserve it, but this just feels wrong to me at the moment. Well, uh, so there's no way to really say that for sure. That he's you, you can't say either way. You can't say that he's getting it. He's getting a star because he died because he did die. And we have no way of seeing whether or not he would have been awarded this either now or later when he, you know, inevitably retired for whatever reason, if he was to remain healthy and still be alive. We have no way of, 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 of determining one way or the other. I can agree with you and say, yeah, he probably wouldn't have gotten the star right now, but in the future, totally, totally, absolutely. Uh, but right now, probably not because he would still be alive and still be active and when and and in actually in the uh, uh, the Starcraft scene. Um, TV did more for Starcraft community than uh, any professional Starcraft 2 player ever did. 
Yeah, there's 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 a lot of I un, I understand I, I I get what you're saying, Draven, but I'm telling you we can't we can't prove a negative, you know? Uh uh and so I don't feel like it's really fair to you know, I don't really feel like it's fair to say that uh, to say that you don't um that well that he wouldn't have got it if he was still alive because yeah, because he would still be alive and still be actively doing stuff. Um so yeah, so I think this is obviously a positive thing. <laughs> I'll fight people to say otherwise. Um, and that's it. There is actually one. I have one more piece of uh, this is actually pretty sad news. Uh, uh, this is pretty sad news for, for a lot of folks here. Um, but uh, so. So. Uh, Sears files for bankruptcy. Sears. Fucking Sears. Filing for bankruptcy. Now, this is a copy from their uh, a press release on the subject. I know it's like super fine print. Uh, some of you guys might be like, what is Sears? <laughs> so, Sears is... Oh my god. What is even happening? Uh, Sears is a pretty big, pretty big company. Uh, for the past, like, 30, 40 years has been huge. Uh, I mean, for, it goes back farther than that. The Sears catalog. Uh, the Sears catalog had a, uh, had a lingerie section uh, that I was very well aware of when I was, uh, younger. Um, and so some of you folks maybe, uh, uh have had shared the same experiences. But, uh, it, it is, it is Sears, Sears is the Am original Amazon. Yeah, when you go into a Sears, uh, a Sears has everything. It sold everything from appliances to movies. It's basically, think what like Best Buy does, and then like take everything, every other store, like Bed Bath and Beyond, and uh let's see, what's it? Yeah, yeah. Best Buy Best Buy is a good start. Bed Bath and Beyond, throw that into the mix. World Market, throw that in the mix. Uh basically everything except for grocery. And then that was basically a Sears store, 140,000 fucking square footage or something like that, of just like massive massive departments of just like everything you could possibly need to furnish your home or your closet or your car or whatever um it was everything yeah everything except for grocery and building materials really it really was uh and so it was yeah you could say you could very well say that sears was the amazon of 30 years ago and they even say uh in this write-up that it was a double it was a double hit right so first off, there was the recession that where nobody was really buying big ticket items. Um, you know, you're, they're not buying, uh, uh, um, you know, laundry machines or dishwashers or, or any of those like or refrigerators. They're not buying those big ticket items anymore uh, because of, you know, nobody's making money. Uh, and then because of that, people were looking towards online sales, right? Because they're trying to get the best possible deal. And so they go to online sales. And then the rise of Amazon, the rise of, of, of prime shipping, get it just as quickly as if you were to plan a trip to Sears. And now that's it. Now, suddenly Sears is, uh, is defunct because it's been made redundant. Um, yeah, yeah, these stores are not going to be around. <laughs> these stores that, that all of us, everybody here has grown up, has technically grown up with a, in, in the big box store, uh, uh, era. And when our kids grow up, you know, assuming that your kids are like, you know, five, six, like my kid, I guess, uh, you know, when they're like 30 something, they'll be like, oh yeah, I remember when they closed all those down. <laughs> like they, I remember when they closed all those down. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that. And that's, uh, that's, that's gonna be their childhood was all these stories basically closed out. You know, obviously it's a completely different circumstance, but Toys R Us is gone. Um, Sears is going to be gone. Uh, uh, Macy's had trimmed down a ton of stores. Um, I mean, fuck, man. Like, it was... I mean, years ago, we lost all the computer stores. Circuit City and Comp USA, uh, and Micro Center. Right? Micro Center, Micro Center, I think they pared everything down. I don't think they actually disappeared. Um, Kmart's gone. Yeah, Target, Target only survived. Well, Kmart's not gone, actually. Uh, but they're not as big as they used to be. Um... Target's only surviving because they've managed to pull themselves away from the Kmart Walmart brand and they separated themselves as basically a um a more prestigious uh Walmart effectively. Uh there's still a micro center in uh, Dallas Fort Worth. Yeah, I think there's still some, but like I know like out here, uh they shut all their stores down, which sucks because I've actually been to the store out here and I was like, oh, this is awesome. It's just like it's like Newegg, the store, and then it's gone. 
<laughs> uh, Toys R Us closed because they didn't. No, there's a whole story behind that. Toys R Us was closed because of corporate greed. Uh, it probably didn't help that that people were buying stuff there as often. But, um, but yeah. Uh, McComp USA, I know, I know. By the way, I won that. I won that bid that I told you guys about yesterday. So, uh, maybe next uh, the next show we do, I'll have to. Uh, have to put that on if you didn't catch it then i won't tell you what it is but uh you just have to wait and find out firsthand uh is that right that i missed the first part of the story because i've been buying shelving units on amazon pretty much <laughs> yeah yeah there you go uh yeah i mean i buy all my stuff from amazon 100 i buy everything from amazon it's just it's just it's the convenience factor i still like going to fries i like going to fries but uh but still it's not um it's just not not the same. So I had to, you know, usually have to pay more for something. Uh, I, I have these turned off typically hey. when I do uh, uh, the show, but you're the only one that uh, that subbed. So thank you, J Radical. <laughs> you get to make it into the VOD, the permanent VOD for the show. There you go. Uh, thank you and welcome back. Uh, internet is open 24 7. Fun colon for my games, but there's Steam. Yeah, I go to GameStop. I go to GameStop for used games. Uh, GameStop is basically become my used game outlet, and that's pretty much it. I still love it for that, actually. It's actually a great place to go to get used games. I just not to not not to sell used games, mind you. You're not gonna you're not gonna make any money trying to sell used games on uh uh to uh um to what's it called to to GameStop. I actually looked up. I did, I wanted to return a game. Uh, I got a copy of Mario Mario Maker for the Wii U, and it and it doesn't work. Uh, for probably a host of reasons. I'm not quite sure which yet. But I was like, oh, wait, maybe I could take this back and I'll just get Declan Mario Maker for for the uh, 2DS instead because he has a 2DS. Uh, and so I went I, I went online. It's like, how much can I trade this in? Uh, and it was like three dollars. I was like, damn, three dollars. I might as well just use it. I might as well just 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 have it around because the amount of times I could look at it and say, I remember Mario Maker. That game's awesome, even though I've never played that specific disc. It's still worth it. It's still worth the three dollars just to have it around on a shelf. It's worth the three dollars. It's stuck. Like, why? What am I gonna do with that three dollars? I'm gonna buy a coffee black. And I can't even afford black coffee, like the smallest size. I don't even know grande or petite or whatever they call it. I don't even think that. I think that costs more than three dollars. Can you buy anything for three dollars? What the hell? Um. So, Sears is a big part of African American history, being one of the first stores to allow black people to shop. I did not know that actually, Perrin. I didn't know that. Um. I mean, it's 125 years old, so yeah, that's, that's, uh, damn, 125 years old. That's fucking crazy. But unfortunately, yeah, it's, uh, it is no longer going to be a thing after, you know, a few years here. They'll all be gone, and then all of those malls that were already dead are going to be that much more dead. It's crazy. Absolutely crazy. Um, so yeah, that is, uh, that's it for the actual news. That I had. can you buy a house from the Sears catalog? I mean, I'm sure there probably was somewhere at some point in time you could buy a house or something like that. <laughs> like I'm sure they had probably some spin-off version of the Sears catalog or something. But uh, yeah, probably, probably. Uh, for those of you guys who are watching this on on uh, YouTube, you can catch this show live every week, unless I can't do a live on Friday, uh, at twitchtv B. We start around three o'clock, two or three o'clock. Depends on how much news there is. Took a long time to sift through all the news today. Uh, a lot longer than I thought it would. Holy crap. Uh, so, uh, uh, so yeah, between two and three Pacific time is when we start. And then we go and get this thing uploaded for all of you fine folks on YouTube. So, sounds awful here. Time to move to, oh, uh, no, everything here is fine. Uh, so, thank you, chat, my guest host. Thank you, my guest host, for joining me today. I appreciate it so much. Why don't you go ahead and take a bow, tell everyone, watch for this guy in the comments, that's the bacon guy right there, that's the bacon guy right there, there he is, everybody wave at him. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for watching, you can follow me on Twitter at slash, twitter.com slash akmikeb, you can see all these guys here in chat, they're here almost every day. And that's it, thanks for watching. <laughs>